Revelations are quoting the prophets, some from Amos, some from Isaiah. The disciples still believed that the kingdom of God or the reign of God, and that's what the kingdom is, they still believed it would mean the restoration of Jewish sovereignty. That's what they thought it would be. They were not thinking that Jesus was going to actually bring in something altogether new. They never thought that. They were not thinking that Jesus, what Jesus had to offer would, be, would exceed the past. They wanted him to reinstate the past. They expected him to reverse the present condition of the Jewish people and when instead of being trodden on by all the powers of the world they would rule. Will you now restore the kingdom to Israel? Will you now endorse Judaism and show the world that it is the true faith and that we are the true people of God? We should not judge the disciples harshly. Jesus didn't. How patient he was. He seemed to realise that it would take a while for them to understand the real nature of the kingdom. He didn't rebuke them. He didn't answer them in a way that would embarrass them or condemn them without telling them that they were just plain wrong. He drew their minds away from the timing of the kingdom to the task of the kingdom. You will receive power and you will be my witnesses, he says. <coughs> starting in Jerusalem and moving on to Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You will be my witnesses, said, is, the, is Jesus' answer to the question about restoring the, the kingdom to Israel. You will be my witnesses. It's an answer to the question by being a remedy for the question. The question is misplaced. Jesus gives answer in a way that will cure the question in time. So they won't ask it anymore. Jesus is himself the reply and the cure for his church's ignorance. That he was then, that he is now. And he is a more than adequate cure. Thank God. You will be my witnesses to correct the notion that the kingdom of God is the state of Israel. The kingdom of God is not what once was. The kingdom of God is not what we were. The kingdom of God is not the resuscitation of former triumphs. The kingdom of God is the reign of his son Jesus in human hearts, in human life, in human society. That's what the kingdom of God is. The book of Acts relates how the church came to realise that in time. Read the book of Acts through in one sitting. And you will see how there is a gradual development in thinking from the position taken by the disciples in this question to where talk about the kingdom of God always meant talk about Jesus. And so we find in places like Acts 28 and, and Acts 8, Paul from morning to evening explains and declares to them the kingdom of God and tries to convince them about Jesus. The kingdom of God is Jesus. He is the king. He is the kingdom. Talk about the kingdom comes to be talk about Jesus Christ. The disciples want to bring back the good old days. They want to bring back the glory days. And what about us disciples now? When we think about the church and how it sits in the world today, it looks as if the glory is far in the past. It looks as if the glory has departed Sometimes when you look at it, no longer does the church have the clout in society that it used to have. No longer does the church rule the social consensus. That's certainly uh, true in, in the developed world. Gone the authority of the church. Gone the, the hold it had on the social conscience. The church struggles to hold its own against a rising tide of scepticism and indifference in developed nations. Loyalty to the church is under threat around the world. People are deserting the church. They have been deserting. Yes, I know there are revivals here and there, but by and large, there is a shrinking of a Christian presence in world populations. And so the cry goes up, we have to return to the old standards. 
We must resurrect that good old message that we had once, that made us great, that made people sit up and take notice. There has to be a return to the distinctive message, the distinctive doctrines, you know, the landmark truths, if you like. We have to get back that good old time religion. What the world needs is a recovery of, of allegiance to the church, fidelity to God's institution. Has to be a renewed emphasis on evangelism to call the multitude away from their futility to the church. We need to recover the authority of the church. I'm paraphrasing the way many of us speak sometimes as Christians. Now is the time for the scepter to be handed back to Israel, which being translated means now is the time for the scepter to be handed back to Christendom. What does the Lord of the church say to all those aspirations? You will be my witnesses. That is his reply in total. You will be my witnesses. Will Christian success mean more adherence to our particular Christian organisation? Maybe so, maybe not. Jesus didn't canvas those possibilities. He said, you will be my witnesses. Will it mean an increase of membership, a stronger organisation, more revenue? Jesus didn't canvas that. He said, you will be my witnesses. Greater influence in civil affairs? Maybe, maybe not. Jesus didn't say, you will be my witnesses. That's what he said. Is the kingdom of God going to be built up in the world by a revival of idioms and uh, civil and moral frameworks that did wonderful service in times past? Not necessarily. The kingdom of God is not the, the re reinstitution of arrangements that did good service before. It may include that, I don't know. That's not what the kingdom of God is, strictly speaking. You will be my witnesses. I think that there is always going to be a tension between the gospel of the kingdom and the situation in which the Christian community finds itself. Between an inclination to retreat to familiar norms and familiar models as opposed to bearing witness to Jesus. When believers seek to reclaim or restore what they once had, there is the potential to freeze frame a piece of their history and equate that with the kingdom of God. Will you now restore the kingdom to Israel is a question that exposes our ever-present appetite for a dynasty. Oh yes, we would like a Christian dynasty. That would make us feel good. But that might hijack the Christian minute mission. Instead of witnessing to Jesus, we would be more interested in Christian structures and Christian hopes and Christian ambitions. The aspirations of men and women might become decisive and thereby a legalism would be, would be born and people would be invited into its bondage. The one safeguard against that subversion of the gospel of the kingdom is a concentration on Jesus, a focus on Jesus. You will be my witnesses. The New Testament does encourage us, doesn't it, to keep looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. You know, that is the reason why Jesus himself is set forth often in the New Testament as an alternative to law. As the very opposite of law, in fact. Law is always the status quo. Law is what we have learned so far. Law is what we have achieved to date. 